Hello listeners, and welcome to this new episode of Seeds of Tomorrow. Today, we're breaking down the steps of the application process for plant variety protection. Step by step, we'll reveal how breeders turn their green innovation into gold standard. Today we have with us Jean Maison, an interim head of the Plant Variety Expertise Unit. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Alessio. Jean, before we dive in into the topic of today, what is your professional experience? Well, I've been working for the Community Plant Variety Rights Office for a long time. Um, community Plant Variety Office. And uh, um, I've been always involved in technical matters, working for what we used to call the technical unit. I started as a case holder, dealing with some files in the ornamental sector and also dealing with variety denominations. Okay, so a case holder is what? A case holder deals with cases, deals with files in a certain, with a certain scope, a certain area. In this case, it was the ornamental sector and then I moved more to the fruit sector and uh, I was also deputy head of the unit, uh, more in charge with uh, general projects of general interest like digitalization in particular, and also coordinating the section of variety denominations. You are managing those case holders. I am managing more in general the unit. Mm -hmm. How many colleagues do you manage? We are 13 of us in the, in the unit. Quite big. Yes, well, it is also the unit which processes the file. The raison d'etre of the office is to process applications for community plant variety rights. And we are the factory a little bit of uh, the office processing all these files, being in daily contact with our stakeholders, applicants. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for uh, bringing the, the topic in. Indeed, we are going to talk about the uh, application process. Um, first of all, how many applications we receive as CPVO on average annually? Well, in the past 10 years, that amount of application varied between 3,100 and 3,600. We experienced a low last year with a little bit less than 2,900. Okay, those are only the applications you receive. And how many uh, plant variety rights you grant per year? In, on average, about 85% of the applications result in a, in a grant, in a positive decision. So the number of uh, decisions varies between 2,700 and 3,000 new titles per year. Okay. And uh, in terms of countries, what are the most uh, attract, uh, well, uh, what are the most active ones? The most active countries in breeding are, uh, without doubt, the Netherlands. We receive a bit more than one third of all our applications from the Netherlands, mainly in the vegetable and the on ornamental sector. And then we receive also quite some applications, 13, 14% from France, in the, mostly in the agricultural and vegetable sector, and also Germany, mostly in the agricultural and ornamental sector. So Germany closed the podium as third. And we have a fourth? Yes, we, we have a fourth. It's not worthy. It's not an EU country, it's the US. We receive also a lot of uh, applications in the agricultural sector, uh, from the US. Okay, well, thank you for all the details. Uh, in the first episode, I well, I asked uh, the president uh, how I could uh, find an application if I were to create a new plant, a new um, variety of apple. And he told me that, yes, I can. But you are the expert here. What, uh, what are the initial steps for finding an application uh, at the CPVO? Well, first of all, anybody can find an application, anybody around the world. If you have even me, if absolutely, uh, they are uh, still also some uh, hobby, hobby botanists making crossings in the backyards, and uh, uh, from this crossing they can obtain new new varieties and apply for protection. So anybody can uh, can apply. So what you need to ensure when you apply for uh, a community plant variety right is that your variety is still new. You should not have commercialized it or exploited it for more than one year within the EU, four years outside the EU. Well, six years in case of trees. Mm -hmm. 
then, um, well, you also need to make sure that plant material of your variety will be available for the technical examination. We will certainly explain later, discuss later. Mm -hmm. We do grow the plants to ensure that uh, the legal requirements are fulfilled, especially distinctness, uniformity, and stability. And for this, we need plant material. Sometimes it may look perhaps uh, straightforward, but if you're not an EU breeder, the plant material is not available in the EU, it may be a challenging procedure to import that material in the EU. This is living material. There are quarantine procedures for some species. That may mm -hmm. be a challenge. And also, depending on what you breed, sometimes we need plant material that needs to have been prepared beforehand. For example, you were mentioning an apple. It needs to be grafted. And the graft, it takes more than one year before you uh, reach the trees, the young trees that we will necessitate for the technical examination. So mm -hmm. for that reason, <coughs> when you file the application, you may, depending on the situation, make sure that you will have material of the variety available for the next growing season. Okay, so I am on my little farm. I have my apples ready to be shipped. I uh, fire up my laptop and I start an application which is online if I want. Absolutely. <clears throat> the application is online. Perhaps the last point I wanted to mention also, if you're not within the EU, you should ensure that you have a representative in the EU. This is also a condition. If you're in the EU, it's not an obligation, but if you're outside the EU, you need to look for a company uh, which will represent you before the CPVO for that procedure. And then, indeed, filing the application, even if you're not within the EU, you can file online. Um, perhaps I can explain, as uh, I've been working for the office for uh, for quite a long time, we were a little bit in, in, in the Europe of world trendsetters, setting up a, an online application system already 15 years ago. 15 years ago, it was, of course, uh, ages ago, but it was still paper time. So everybody... I did receive all these applications on paper with forms and we proactively developed such a system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the beginning, it was not compulsory at all. And we wanted to make it available and uh, people used it. People used it without any incentive, like a lower fee, which came later. Uh, more than the half of the applications were filed online. That was of interest for us because we clearly see uh, the opportunity to have consistency checks to oblige breeders to fill out all the information they are supposed to fill out mm -hmm. in the in the online form, and this is to both interests because for us it means that we don't need to go back to the breeder. Hey, we are missing that information, or that information is not clear. The system will drive you to uh, put uh, all the information necessary and uh, check consistency. And also it's the interest of the breeder because it secures the application date. will not bother them with uh, back and forth communication, uh, asking for this, asking for that, uh, additional information. And on top of that, the online application, if I understand it well, uh, it's even less expensive than the, the, the paper one right now. Yes, at that time we received about, well, the majority of our applications were received online in the middle of the, the year 2010 and in 2016. Then we've put in place a clear incentive with a reduced application fee in case you apply online, which is amounts now uh, 450 euros. Mm -hmm. At that time, a paper application was 650 euros, and then it was further increased to 800 euros. So it's a little bit uh, deterring uh, a paper applicant. Still, uh, we have uh, a couple of them, if I may say so, but... Uh, so we received 2,900 applications last year, two on paper. Just to give you an idea that it's an anecdote. Okay, um, I'm going to file an online application because I'm interested in uh, saving some money. <coughs> and I have submitted all the documents you require. Can you walk us through the technical examination that you're going to process? Again, I have this new idea of apples. What happens to them? Yes, well, <clears throat> first of all, if you file that application, you will hear from us. We'll feedback. You will have an acknowledgement of receipt. More than 80% of the applications, we acknowledge receipt within five days. So uh, there is a clear feedback 
from our side, we have received the application, everything is fine, or we need additional information. And at that stage, you will also know uh, what we will do, what will happen with your application. In this acknowledgement of receipt, we'll tell you whether we will organize a technical examination to check the distinctness uniformity criteria, asking for plant material, or in case you indicated that such a technical examination is already ongoing because this uh, distinctness uniformity criteria and stability criteria, they are also checked for the purpose of other procedures a national protection or an authorization for marketing in the EU. So it may be, well be the case that as a breeder, you may have undertaken other steps to uh, uh, protect or to have authorization for marketing of your variety in another procedure. And it will, of course, not redo what has already been done or what is already ongoing. So this is all information that you're supposed, to, you're supposed to bring to the application form. And once we have investigated on all this information, then we will tell you, okay, well, uh, we have, uh, there is a procedure that is already ongoing that we file reliable, and we will take over the existing results of that procedure. And alternatively, if it's not the case, then we would organize a technical examination asking you for plant material. Okay, and what is the typical duration for this technical examination you are mentioning? And does it vary between species? Because I can think that my mm, apple can grow faster than uh, oak, or for instance, or other trees. Yeah, well, indeed. Uh, first of all, if we organize a technical examination, we'll ask you for material. So not too much in advance to avoid that you forget, but also uh, sufficiently in advance to uh, enable you to organize the shipping of that material. So usually two, three months in advance, we ask you, okay, well, can you please send, usually during the winter or very beginning of the spring, trees of your apple variety, young trees. Um, the request is uh, clear. They should be one year old. They must have been grafted just a year before. And uh, then we'll grow, <coughs> we'll receive that material and we'll grow the plants. And in the case of a tree, of course, it will take a bit longer because what we need ultimately to see, these are the apples. And the first apples, uh, we're likely to see them in the second year of the examination. But we need also to have reliable observation and a full fruit set, which usually take place in the third and fourth year after you have submitted your plant material. So in the case of an apple three, tree, uh, the technical examination will take three, four years in some situations where varieties are particularly close to each other, it may take an, adi an additional year to ascertain that distinctness criteria in particular are fulfilled. So I'm looking at four years of testing where you assess the uh, DUS criteria, so distinct, uniform and stable. And then I know that there is another criteria that you're going to uh, take into consideration once uh, the first three have been cleared up? Well, <clears throat> yes, indeed. During the technical examination, we uh, we assess the technical criteria, the so-called technical criteria. In parallel, we also check uh, that other conditions are fulfilled for your application. You should, in particular, be entitled to apply. So you must be either the breeder or the breeder should have entitled you to apply for community plant variety right because i can act for multiple breeders i can be the um, middleman for between you and the breeders absolutely well what you can do as a breeder either you say okay i'm uh, good at breeding and i bring excellent varieties but the exploitation of such varieties the organization of license contracts collecting royalties not by business i just sell my variety to an applicant to a nursery which will develop that variety, undertake some marketing activities, and of course, organize the multiplication and so on. Um, so for that purpose, you may transfer your rights. Okay, I sell you my variety, then it's yours, you do what you want, <clears throat> and I have money. Alternatively, I can say, okay, well, I want to still to be uh, the breeder and the, <coughs> the holder of, of that variety, but well, exploiting it and organizing all these license contracts, it's not, it's not by business. I delegate it to another company 
which should <coughs> exploit the variety, collect uh, the royalties, and of course, part of these royalties will be for the remuneration of the work, but a, a big part of it, it should be funded back to me, and that will finance, of course, my research and development activities. As you may know, breeding apples is very long and expensive. Yes, it took me a long time to breed this variety, yes. And I haven't found a name to it yet. Is this a problem? No, no. Well, <coughs> usually breeders, uh, they, they first give names of beloved ones, and that's very straightforward. Uh, the thing is that, uh, well, uh, the number of names available is not indefined because you should not trade off an existing name. If, uh, so if yourself you have the name for one of your variety, you will not want someone else to take a uh, name which is very similar or identical to yours. And do you check this? Yes, we do. We do check indeed that the denomination is suitable. It should not be confusing with an existing denomination. It should also not be misleading. You cannot call your apple uh, blue sky if it's not blue because uh, applicants or users may think, mm, well, this is a blue apple, and that's not the case. Not yet. No, no, not yet, it. indeed. Yeah. Uh, and, and so uh, for this, we use a database of existing names. Uh, the challenge of a database is always to maintain it up to date. That database is called Variety Finder. And we have a colleague uh, busy um, maintaining that database, feeding it with any new, the name of any new varieties registered around the world in order really to have uh, a reference for checking uh, the, the denomination, whether it's confusing or not to an existing name. If I'm looking for an inspiration, or rather avoid repetition, can I, look at, can I have a look at your variety finder? Absolutely, since uh, the denomination should not be confusing with the denomination of an apple variety. But nobody would confuse an apple variety and a wheat or a maize variety. So an ID could be, just have a look at the name of maize varieties or wheat varieties. If you find out a new name, try and use it for your apple. Okay, great, I will do that. Um, we are on the fourth year, everything's going fine. I found a name that I love and you love too, <coughs> because you cleared it out. W once all the requirements are satisfied, um, wh what happens? How does the CPVO grant the title for plant right rights? Well, first of all, during the technical examination, we'll inform you. The technical examination of an apple is particularly long. Still, we have a lot of species where it doesn't take four years to establish the DUS requirement. So every year, we'll send you what we call an interim report informing you about how it went. Mm -hmm. uh, everything went well, the, grow the trees are growing well. If there is any problem or any potential problem during the technical examination, we'll invite you to visit the trial. You are anytime welcome to visit the trial anyway, but we will particularly inform you in case there is any problem. In other words, well, if you hear nothing from us, it means everything goes well. You're free, of course, to visit the troll at any time, but so if you hear nothing and everything runs smoothly, the DUS criteria are fulfilled, and then you will receive, after these four years, a positive examination report mm -hmm. with a variety description. This description is established <coughs> according to a well-established protocol uh, that we uh, have adopted through our administrative council for each species. We have more than 200 protocols already for more than 200 species uh, which have been adopted so far. And this is the reference, this is the background for organizing the technical examination and observing characteristics of the variety according to a well-defined list in this protocol. So if the variety is the US, you will receive the report, this positive report, with a full variety description of your variety. So every party is satisfied, and then what? Then anyway, the re we'll send you the report for comments. Mm -hmm. Are you satisfied? Do you recognize your variety? And then as soon as you are satisfied with the report or within a delay of maximum two months, then we will proceed with the decision. We'll have checked mean time, as we mentioned earlier, that the, the variety is new, that uh, you are entitled to file the application, that it has a suitable denomination, and last but not least also, there are fees. 
linked to applications. We mentioned earlier the application fee, but uh, there is also the examination fee. We are running a self-finance system and uh, we pay for the cost of the technical examination, the real cost. We pay such cost to our examination offices. We don't grow the plants ourselves. We subcontract that work. An applicant should pay exactly that amount that we pay to the examination office. It's an in-out principle and we fully cover the cost. It is the intention. So every year mm -hmm. for your Apple variety, you will have to pay for the cost of the technical examination. Apple is one of the most expensive species, uh, which is the fruit sector. This is uh, about more than 4,000 euro per variety. So it is an investment to protect your it is, but it is a, a, a worthy one. And speaking of uh, protecting my variety, uh, what is the duration of the community plant variety right? Yes, all these criteria are being fulfilled and we will proceed with the decision. Uh, we said in the beginning we grant uh, a bit less than 3,000 titles every year. <clears throat> and then the duration is usually 25 years for most species. Mm -hmm. But for trees, 30 years. Because it is deemed to be to take longer to... Um, uh, to breed an apple variety so uh, breeders enjoy a longer period of protection during which they can recover on their investment in exploiting their, their, their variety. St as a standard, um, the, the duration of titles is either 25 or 30 years depending on species. For some species like woody ornamentals, woody small fruits, flower bulbs, mm -hmm. potatoes, asparagus. The duration is 30 years, but we would deduct from the 30 years the potential duration of an earlier national protection that you may have had before. It ends up to a little bit of a tricky calculation. So roughly speaking, the duration is between 25 and 30 years for those species. Okay. Now I have my uh, community plant variety right. Uh, and I'm meeting my fellow growers what should i tell them what are the the, the, the challenges that applicants face commonly at cpvo uh, I, what would be <coughs> the lesson learned that they can share with them the challenges i think and it was particularly illustrated for for this kind of species the particular challenge is really to have the plant material ready in the case of an apple variety before you file the application you should already undertake the steps to prepare the plant material and I think this is, this is one of the biggest challenges that we meet uh, in the application procedures. Material must be available in the EU. Sometimes it's not been imported yet. It needs to be imported. It may be time-consuming. Mm -hmm. You should also secure that you can multiply your variety. Sometimes there are difficulties in the multiplication. Breeders just apply, and then they realize, oh, well, but I face difficulties in obtaining plant material of that variety, multiplying it. And, of course, this creates problem in the application procedure. So for me, uh, the also perhaps as a technical expert, I would say that uh, the practical part uh, is maybe challenging in, in, in our procedures. How the CPVO collaborate with other European institutions and also member states to, to harmonize plant variety protection laws and practices, protocols? Yes, well, all, all countries which have plant variety protection legislation are members of UPOF, the Union for the Protection of uh, Plant Varieties. And UPOF is very active in coordinating, harmonizing the system and organizes regular meetings to discuss the development of the implementation of the legislation. Mm -hmm. So we are very active participants at CPVO participating in particular in technical meetings. There are technical meetings dedicated to each crop sector, agriculture, vegetable, ornamental, and fruits. There are also technical meetings linked to the development of new techniques, in particular uh, biomolecular techniques, in particular phenotyping. All these techniques uh, are uh, monitored by UPOF. There is a dedicated working group investigating on how such techniques could be implementing in the implemented in the US testing procedure to render it quicker, to render it more efficient, to render it less costly. Mm -hmm. This is also a working group where we are very active. Uh, there are also legislative developments, <coughs> interpretations of the legislation. There was, for example, lately 
long discussions on the concept of essentially derived varieties. All discussions, all these discussions involve always the stakeholders, national uh, authorities, members of UPOF, regional authorities like CPVO. There is also another one in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, namely OAP, and also uh, breeders, because uh, intellectual property is always a private system. It is developed uh, as an incentive for research and innovation. So it should serve its purpose. And that's the reason why also uh, the implementation of the le legislation is always developed uh, hearing the voice of the users of, of that legislation who are the breeders. So they always actively participate in all these discussions at UPOF level. And this is all these discussions lead to a lead to harmonization. It's always guidance. It needs to be implemented at national level or in our case at regional level. And at, at CPVO, within the EU, we also have regular meetings to discuss on the development of the implementation of all that legislation for the purpose to have a harmonized implementation. And it has consequences on, on uh, national developments as well. Um, Jean, looking towards the future, uh, what are the changes or improvements do you foresee in the process of plant variety application and protection? Well, indeed, um, <clears throat> we have developed over time an internal system to manage our applications. You can imagine that managing 3,000 applications every year and having uh, close to 6,000 applications on the procedure in parallel necessitates uh, a system to manage all this, to monitor all this, to make sure that we do not skip forget any step, any communication during the whole procedure. We have developed an internal system which, uh, where we have a culture of continuous improvement, especially when during one given procedure we, um, uh, <coughs> we, we see a loophole or we, uh, we see that there is something that has slept through then we will always try to improve our system in order to avoid that it happens again in the future. So this is this culture of in continuous improvement that we have tried to implement constantly. And in addition, many of us followed recently a training on lean management or the management of process, uh, processes, projects, and we will also try to uh, implement some modern notions in this culture of continuous improvement, hoping that we will even better improve for the future. Mm -hmm. So that's as far as our uh, internal procedures are concerned. There is also perhaps uh, another point that we mentioned, keeping cost under control yeah. is a constant um, uh, objective. And where we will for this, we need for the, we develop for this a sector of research and innovation, trying to look at new technologies uh, which could help us in decreasing and running this DUS test more efficiently. What kind of technologies you are looking at at the moment? Such technologies may, for example, be molecular techniques, the analysis of DNA, which may very much assist, make the process of DUS testing more efficient. Phenotyping may also be uh, also a, a way forward. No, we have all of us on our mobile phone face recognition. Well, why not having variety recognition uh, with, uh, with, with the mobile phone? Tell me more, tell me more. So I, I take pictures of my apples and send them to you. Well, of course, we, of course we are not yet there, but one can imagine that if we work on these techniques, perhaps one day it will be possible to use more image analysis uh, to... Uh, for the purpose of variety descriptions, for the purpose of identification of varieties, and that would replace uh, perhaps uh, today's visual observations by experts mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, numerous observations which necessitate, which are time consuming for the purpose to elaborate statistics. Sometimes um, you cannot always assess all characteristics of a variety visually, you need to measure, <clears throat> and that takes a lot of time. Imagine that you measure the width of the leaf of a grass variety. So it's a tiny organ, a few millimeters. You take your ruler, you take the leaf, you take your ruler, and you have to measure hundreds. 
it is it is it is of course it, you have to be precise because the differences between varieties are relatively small mm -hmm. but imagine your grass variety half a millimeter difference uh, between uh, in, in the width of a leaf between two varieties but if you consider billions of leaves in nectar yeah. in the end a little bit a, a bit wider leaf may materialize in one ton more uh, harvesting hay in your field and that's the reason why it is also sometimes necessary to be precise and technology image analysis with a drone with a camera moved um, along the DUS testing field and the plots could potentially help in this cumbersome and tedious uh, current exercise of going to the field, grabbing uh, leaves, measuring all these leaves, <clears throat> gives you an idea on how research and innovation could probably in the future assist in our uh, DUS testing procedures. Something else also looking forward uh, to the future that we very much look at. We are, of course, in a moving world, in a moving IP world. In the recent past year, there has been on the table a, dis a discussion on the legislation of new genomic techniques yeah. uh, and uh, also intellectual property related issues. Uh, can you patent all these new genomic techniques? What will be the influence on community plant variety rights, which at some point could be also perceived or used as competitive systems. Mm -hmm. We are self-financed, so we need to receive a minimum number of applications to continue our operation. Yeah. Uh, and of course, if there are developments that affect uh, potentially the number of applications we may receive in the future, uh, we need to anticipate, we need to foresee, and uh, we need to make sure that uh, the community plant variety right system or the plant variety right system more in general, which is supposed to be <clears throat> the most efficient, the most adapted to protect plant variety, remains in that situation and that it is not kind of uh, uh, over uh, or, um, what shall I say, um, uh, uh, taken over or, or by, by, by some other system and does not disappear because uh, breeders would go for some alternative system with also some drawbacks for, for society. Mm -hmm. If you patent something, for example, mm -hmm. uh, there is a cornerstone of uh, the UPOF system. Anybody can use protected variety for further breeding. You can use a protected apple variety as a source of crossings to breed your further variety. If there is a patent on some characteristics, then that what is called breeder exemption does not exist. It means that anybody willing to use a patented trait, we need to get the authorization of the holder of that patent. Mm. And authorization yeah. means money that they have to spend. Authorization means money, paying royalties. So it is not uh, deemed to foster innovation uh, <coughs> in, in, in the sector. And that's the reason why uh, for really a better incentive, a better dynamic in breeding activities, the plant variety right system is deemed to be uh, the best one. And it is also materialized in the situation where in this sector, plant breeding, mm -hmm. a relatively high number of the turnover of companies is invested in research and development activities, uh, especially thanks to uh, this incentive that anybody can use a protected variety to further breed. There is no limitation that accelerates certainly uh, progress is made in, in, in uh, plant breeding. Jean, you were mentioning uh, incentives for stakeholders and, um, and breeders. Um, there is this SME found 2024. Uh, can, you, can you explain us a bit more what this mechanism is about and why it's beneficial for breeders? We explained that we are running a, a self-finance system. It means that the costs are covered by the breeders when, in, in, when they have to pay various fees during the application procedure. And this is uh, development, in, in especially in the recent past, costs are increasing. All kind of costs, to start with the energy cost and with all kind of consequences on all the costs in general, uh, inflation in the economy. It is a challenge to also the cost of the US testing, of course. 
uh, bear in mind also that, for example, <clears throat> some uh, species must be grown in greenhouses, uh, they need to be heated, uh, well, more and more also with climate change for your Apple DUS testing. We will not just put them to a field, but we have a field with some netting uh, to uh, prevent from, uh, for example, hail uh, hazard or storms and uh, really keep the trial on, in a safe condition. All these has for consequence to increase cost. And that's the reason why costs have been identified also and claimed by breeders to be a, a bottleneck in preventing them potentially to apply for community plant variety right. And for that reason, uh, an incentive <clears throat> in terms of uh, subsidies to apply for community plant variety right is certainly very positive uh, to at least initiate the procedure. And uh, SME found that this uh, running for the second year in a row for the um, plant variety rights covers up to 1,500 <coughs> euros the online application and examination fees per SME. Well, I can say that indeed uh, this is for the second year in a row that we um, propose such an incentive. The success of the earlier exercise was a little bit limited and it was indeed uh, in terms of amount when you balance it to the amount of time that you need to invest to understand how it works to get your voucher to use it up may have been perceived by breeders as not very uh, proportionate to the relatively limited amount proposed i recall that it was 225 euros So we can expect and reasonably assume that no, offering 1,500 euro is uh, a much better uh, incentive to undertake the efforts to get this voucher and uh, the administrative procedure to have access to this fund. It is obvious that you cannot just make funds available without any efforts for uh, the, uh, the user of, of this fund. Uh, that user needs to undertake a few steps still to prove that uh, the funds will be used uh, uh, in, in a reasonable way or, or uh, in relation to, to their objective. And uh, the balance is certainly much better with 1,500 euros this year. Okay. Um, before wrapping up, um, <coughs> for someone interested in applying for priority rights, what advice would you offer to ensure a smooth and successful application process? Well, make sure that when you, at the moment when you apply, your variety is still new. Uh, ensure that you uh, have a procedural representative in case this is necessary. Make sure also that plant material will be made available in Europe for the DUS testing of your variety. And don't hesitate to reach out. Great. Thank you, Jean. Thank you very much, Alessio. And this is a wrap up for today's episode. I would like to express my gratitude to Jean for his time and knowledge. And to our listeners, thank you for spending this time with us. I'm Alessio De Laurentiis, reminding you to join us next time for more engaging discussions. The music you're listening to is by Jatscopo, a Lombardi and Amoroso production. <laughs>